Let's say you've got 24 hours in Seattle, Washington. What do you do with yourself? Where do you eat? Well, definitely get involved with coffee and seafood because hey, it's Seattle. Nicknamed as Emerald City and Rain City, Seattle and its surrounding areas are green throughout the year thanks to the evergreens and rain. Summers do get sunny and warm, and locals tell me winter is all about that hookah. Ready or not, it's gonna be a yummy 24 hours. We even go underground. Hey guys! Hi! Mamuyo and I just moved to Washington this past summer, and we are in downtown Seattle, and there is so much to do. One day is not enough, but we're gonna squeeze in as many munchies as possible. It's 11.30 a.m. and our first stop is Mishu. We were here a few months ago, and we're back. There are stacks of sandwich options. So the best seller here is Sierra, but I was asking the worker, like, what is your personal favorite though, like flavor-wise? And he was saying the Thai beef. So we're gonna try that out. Aside from sandwiches, they have a parade of diverse dishes from salad to pasta. The classic baked potato, arancini, fried rice balls with gorgonzola, called Michu's dream cake. That fluffy white layer reminds me of clouds. What, what? There's kimchi chicken. I'm gonna need to try that. And then there's all this dessert. The marshmallow cookie sandwich looks like teeth. What kind of sandwich are you making? Roast beef. A roast beef sandwich. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, here we have the toasted Sierra made of chicken, red onion, gouda, tomato, greens, and house chipotle sauce. The Thai beef sandwich, also toasted, contains marinated grilled flank steak, cilantro, greens, cucumber, and mayo. Done! Yeah. Cheers! <laughs> It's salty and savory, a little bit sweet. Oh, just look at that. The golden brown exterior is freckled with poppy seeds, and you definitely taste the mayo in that. Look at how beautiful that is. <gasps> Looks like a, a fishnet. The colors in this is more yellow. Cheers. This one's a little bit spicy. The Thai beef sandwich, that one had one slice of beef, but this one has um, multiple layers of the chicken. The Sierra seems to have more greens as well, so there's some moments you're like, mmm, I feel like you're eating a salad. The Sierra sandwich is taller and more filling than the Thai beef sandwich, though I must say the Thai beef has a deeper flavor. I like both of them. Thai beef is so flavorful, right? Mm -hmm. right? The Sierra, when I have a bite of it, I have like one sparkle, but with the Thai beef, that one's like five sparkles. What about the kimchi chicken? Mmm, kimchi! <laughs> the inside is your regular old chicken. It's the outside, it has a kimchi flavor, so the meat inside doesn't actually soak in the exterior. Right next to Mishu is Piroshki Piroshki, known for its Russian pastries. The smoked salmon pate piroshki is one of the best sellers. However, the employee's favorite is jalapeno and cheese sausage piroshki. The sweets are tempting me. Holy wow, cherry white chocolate piroshki. Passing by the first Starbucks in the world. We'll stop by later to get some coffee. Looking for a place to sit and eat? Nearby is a Victor Steinbrook Park with views of Bainbridge Island and the Seattle Great Wheel. The park is named after Victor Steinbrook, who was a Seattle architect, known for his efforts to preserve Pike Place Market and Pioneer Square. He also contributed to the design of the Space Needle. So we have 45 minutes until the walking tour of the underground world. Oh, that is in the shape of a salmon. Ooh, is that dill? Dried dill? Mmm, mmm. Definitely seafoody, salmony. The pastry's thickness varies. Some areas are thin, while this side is like seven times thicker. The interior contains a hollow space, making it look like a yawning whale. It looks hollow, but it tastes dense. Onto Uli's jalapeno and cheese sausage piroshki. The zigzag on the top adds pizzazz to the pastry. <laughs> Whoa, super saucy. Now the skin of the sausage appears thin and delicate, but it is surprisingly stubborn. I recommend you bite with assertive attitude. Mm. That sausage, every bite, is a wrestle. Which one do you prefer? Salmon. Me too. As we give our bodies time to digest, let's check into the hotel. Poly Hotel's got a fun aesthetic. One wall has framed alpaca, and books turned around backwards. Another area has checkered flooring with a rainy day sketch. Mamio fell in love with the sofa, and I'm digging this coffee table. 
Coolio, check out this foldable screen with painted birds and gold molding. Yo, even the bathroom got some design love. An army of flowers to encourage good deuces. There's a restaurant connected to the lobby called The Heart and the Hunter. Okay, let's put our bags in the room. We're looking for room 313. We've got the door here, the king size bed, and the bathroom. But you might ask, where is the sink? Well, there is yet another corner. Boom! Sink, fridge, and coffee tea section with snacks. Next to the fridge is the open air closet. So we just learned that this building was constructed in 1896, so over 100 years old. And then I asked them, is this building haunted? Has there been any ghost sightings? And supposedly, on the fourth floor, there is something going on there. But we're on the third floor, so it's gonna be all good. The floral headboard matches the pillow. Cute! It is said this is one of the quieter rooms. Alright, heading back out. After walking 15 minutes south, we arrived to the underground tour next to Pioneer Square. Thanks to our entertaining guide, we learned about the interesting history of Seattle. We literally were under the sidewalk, and these translucent tiles act as a skylight. It's a whole nother world down here. On the way to get fish and chips, we noticed the glass tiles on the ground. Now that we know what they are, I have a newfound appreciation for them. We made it to Ivar's fish bar and there are like 21 branches. You can go street food style or sit inside the restaurant next door. Let's go to the fish bar. They sell various seafood including Dungeness crab cocktail and shrimp taquitos. Many options, but we shall go with the true cod fish and chips along with a bowl of chowder. Sauce for the fish and chips. Malt vinegar, red pepper, and garlic vinegar. Shall we sit indoors? Somehow the pigeons got stuck. We can also eat outside and hang out with the seagulls. More than a dozen to keep you company. Because it's Monday, it's pretty quiet. Very good. So creamy. Far from the canned version of clam chowder, the bacon really makes that flavor fun. There are chunks of potato. Wow, those fries are really good! Honestly, I didn't have like really high expectations because in a lot of places people recommend like for tourists Sometimes it's like just famous because it's famous But these fries are wow It's crispy It's just very light amount of salt while it has oil, it's not overly oily, so that's a plus, in my opinion. When I talk about fries with friends, everyone has their own preference. So for me, I like this. You might have a different opinion. So let me know in the comments section, where are your favorite places to get fries? We have a packaged tartar sauce, original recipe. So the tartar sauce, strongly tasting of dill. Onto the true cod fish and chips. It's really fresh. Everything is falling apart. <laughs> Almost looks like a thick slab of cheese. The outside gives it the flavor because the outside is fried, so it tastes oily. How is it with the tartar sauce? Mmm, the relish really sang in that bite. This one is the garlic vinegar, and in the bottle there were actually real pieces of garlic inside. I don't taste garlic in that. And it looks like it has chili flakes in there, those little red specks. The spicy, definitely vinegar. This is all just very comfort food. But I want some more clam in clam chowder. I'm fishing clams here. <laughs> oh, they chopped up the yeah, clam. Yeah, very thinly chopped. We're gonna try clam chowder at another shop tomorrow, so we shall compare how they are similar or different. The fish and chips are smooth in flavor, while the sauces bring a sharpness. On the way towards Pike Place Market, we stop by the Waterfront Park, which overlooks Elliott Bay. The park is mostly made of wood and concrete. Trees hang out around circular stairs. Ooh, what's over there? A stationery shop? Turns out it's a letterpress studio. Holy wow, yes. Anybody else get giddy around letterpress cards? Or letterpress anything, really? Notebook of a tree silhouette on trunk. While the upper level of Pike Place Market is dedicated to fresh produce and craft stalls, the lower levels are home to some really cool shops. Well, cool in my opinion. A shop that sells magic trick supplies and memorabilia. Bookshops. 
Hands of the World sells folk art, jewelry, and accessories from across the globe. I'll show you more details of these shops later in this video. For now, up we go to the street level. Turn the corner and head back down a different route. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the Gum Wall. Started in the 90s by theater patrons waiting in line, the Gum Wall grew into a tourist attraction. It was cleaned once in 2015 and over 2,000 pounds of gum was removed. Soon after, locals and tourists restarted their collective masterpiece. Mamio happened to have gum and makes a contribution. She stretches it like melty cheese. Cool, now make like a hundred more to make it feel like snow. <laughs> It's a little past 5 p.m. The first time we came here, we had the hardest time finding this door and this restaurant is called the Pink Door. Open since 1981, the Pink Door serves Italian-American cuisine. Everywhere you look is curious decor, like this mermaid holding two lights. Every evening there's live entertainment. Tonight we catch an aerial performance. Introducing the Naughty Hottie Fig Toddy, where fig is infused with brandy. It's a bit warm so I have to wait. Five minutes later, Smells like ginseng and rubbing alcohol. It's so weird because when you first have it, it tastes very gentle and then boom, at the end it becomes violent. <laughs> and yet, I still like it. Smell like herb medicine. As you progress into the drink, the ending is not as violent or sharp. It gets more gentle. Maybe because your taste buds, your tongue gets used to it. I'm feeling tipsy and I like it. I just learned that guests are not allowed to film or take photos of the performance. But here's some bread. In a salad made of celery, mushroom, fennel, parsley leaves, parmigiano, and olive oil. As well as pork shank with soft polenta and fresh horseradish gremolata. This almost looks like scrambled egg, but it is polenta. Oh, it just peels right off. Just about to leave the restaurant. Look at this view. I'm gonna have some chamomile tea. I picked up these three magazines from the underground tour. True PNW. PNW stands for Pacific Northwest. Whoa, look at this hot dog. Oh, interesting. It's a magazine in a magazine. 7.15 a.m. Right across from the hotel is Seattle Coffee Works. Seattle Coffee Works sells direct trade and locally roasted whole bean coffee. Cool, a muffin with a square top. Let's try something on their slow bar menu. The Divisadero Natural from El Salvador. It does come from a single farm, but that farm is on a mountainside. This was picked at a range of 12 to 1600 meters above sea level. Cheers! It's a bit hot, so better be careful not to burn the taste buds. So light, but flavory. Yeah, pretty light in color. Ooh. Typically, Mommy O drinks coffee in the morning. She's the coffee person. Would you say you're a coffee freak? Yeah. It was really nice, pleasant experience. Somebody is just making coffee for just me and you. <laughs> I can't talk about coffee intellectually with like, expertise. I'm more of a tea drinker, but this is still a fun experience. We're going to be checking out Pike Place Market. According to Yelp, it opens at 7 a.m. But according to a source Mommy O found on Yahoo, they said it opens at 9. So we're going to see for ourselves. A vendor here is setting up to sell her flowers. Everyone else is currently empty. Looks like we we're pretty early. Last time we were here, it was packed like a can of sardines. The names on the floor tiles are donors of the Pike Place Market renovation. Up ahead is Socio's Fruit and Produce, which has been family owned for over 50 years. A rainbow of fresh fruit. Wow, those blueberries look pumped up. Thank this you. is a uh, Washington opal apple. Yeah. So sweet. Uh, like mm. Yeah, sumo. Wow. sumo yeah. <laughs> In the US, we call it sumo. A little tangy. But it's from the same rootstock as the one they grow in uh, India. It's called a Malgova mango. Malgova yeah, mango. Yeah, Malgova. Yeah. So juicy. You still get mangoes at the grocery store in this country. 
I got some info for you guys. So it's not the whole market that opens at the same time. Some places open very early. Like this produce vendor, they open around 4 a.m. Every day, that's early. A lot of private chefs come and shop here. The flower vendors, by nine, everything's gonna be set up. There's another produce vendor. Also, some seafood stalls open early. Although not everything is open, it's still fun to come early because then you have more one-on-one -on -one time with the people who work here and they might be able to explain more things in detail. Last time we were here, there was a crowd around this stall and all waiting with their cameras and cell phones like to capture that moment when they throw the fish. On our way to get mac and cheese, we pass by the sanitary public market. Another colorful orchestra of fresh produce. Romanesco broccoli. Beautiful, yet triggers my tripophobia. Yukon gold potato bread. We just learned those hanging things are called ristras, and they make it here, and those can last for two years if you want to eat it, like use it for cooking. But if you want to just use it for display, it can last for 10 years. So cool. You learn something new every day. Misum pastry is famed for their steam buns. They also sell almond tarts and pineapple bread. So many food options. But our mission this morning is to beat the line at Beechers. Later in the day, a queue forms around the building. The glass windows allow visitors to observe the cheese making process. And when standing in line, it'll work up an appetite. Amazing. It's my first time seeing no line at Beechers. Wow, the air is so cheesy. These stacks of cheese are huge. Each block is nearly the length of the gentleman's head to belly button. Toss the block into the shredder and it rains cheese. And here's some more cheese. My lactose intolerance is shivering. So these samples are aged uh, one day old, they're fresh. And these ones, it's the same cheese. But it's aged 15 months at least. We'll first try the fresh cheese curds. The flavor reminds me of string cheese, but a different texture. Like string cheese is like a little bit bouncy, but this one's on the firm side. Let's try the uh, cheese that has been aged over one year. Whoa! Textures are slightly different. You know like when you bite into sugar, it has that gritty sound? Every bite, there's a little bit of that sugary sound. It's much more complex, and it's more sharp too, huh? Yeah. There are also samples of crackers. Let's try the cheese called New Woman, which contains Jamaican jerk spice. Mmm, that's a fun one to eat. There's a lot going on. Subtle spiciness. Looks very creamy. That might be the best mac and cheese I've ever had. Super cheesy. Some mac and cheese, the cheese doesn't taste authentic. It tastes like a lot of preservatives. Like especially instant mac and cheese, it doesn't taste like real, if you know what I mean. I'm not saying it's bad. Some people like that flavor. But this one, they use real cheese. And it tastes so good. It's not just me. It's a little spicy, right? Mm. There's some red specks in there. Oh, is it chili flakes? Yeah. You know me, I mean, I don't like mac and cheese. Uh, but I love this one. Yeah. Mm. I must say though, it is a bit salty. I'm getting thirsty after eating all this cheese. When you look at it, it looks plain, but it is so tasty. This is just our appetizer. We ordered two grilled sandwiches, and that's gonna be about eight minutes to make. Awesome, some seats opened up to get front row to the cheese making. The shredded pieces are going for a spin, kind of like whisking. We just got our grilled sandwiches. It's so warm. <laughs> oh, it feels so nice. Oh, my hands are so cold right now. <laughs> mm, beautiful. Oh. You know, we've been pretty lucky on this trip. We've been eating so much good food. You know, Mina, I love grilled cheese sandwich. <laughs> the bread is crispy, and the inside, super cheesy. Here's basil and tomato. And it's salty, but because of the bread, it balances out the saltiness. Oh man, it's so crispy. Even before I swallow, I want to just keep biting because of that sound. Mm. Do you prefer the mac and cheese or this one more? Same. Same. <laughs> it's wrapped like an envelope. Here's a kimchi grilled cheese sandwich made with their flagship and just jack cheese. 
Kimchi Rific. <laughs> I've never, never imagined, you know, the kimchi is a very good match to cheese. Kimchi is. The kimchi in this is sliced into thinner bits. Not as spicy as I was thinking it might be. I think it's a little bit saltier than the uh, flat chip grilled sandwich. Because this kimchi is too strong flavor. The flat chip sandwich uh, is you can enjoy the cheese more. For the flat chip sandwich, the cheese really speaks loudly. But with the kimchi uh, sandwich, it's the kimchi that screams more attention. And the cheese becomes like a background dancer. When we bite and pull, the cheese doesn't stretch out, right? It's a very like clean break cheese. When we got here, I was excited to try their Dungeness crab sandwich, but actually that was off the menu for two years. But people continue to ask for it because they see it on like a Yelp photo, for example. But they do have other sandwich options. Established in 1971, the first Starbucks opened its doors right here in Seattle by a history teacher, an English teacher, and a writer. Did you know Starbucks was almost named Cargo House, Pequod, or Starbo? While this store is called the first Starbucks, it's actually the second location of the first Starbucks. The building of the first Starbucks first location no longer exists. Typically, there's a very long line here, but today we are early enough. Woohoo! Above the entrance door, there is a pig sculpture made of coffee beans. I was asking, like, what is something that you guys only sell here and not at other Starbucks locations? I was told it's the Pike Place Special Reserve, and I got it in the flat white. Got our drinks, and wow, the leaves on the ground really make you feel autumn. We're back at the hotel, and we're going to be checking out soon. And now let's try the Pike Place uh, Reserve. Bitter. Milky, because there is milk in there. How does it compare to your drink? My drink is just coffee. I'm gonna try Mamio's. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ho, ho. <laughs> Definitely no milk in that. I prefer this flavor though. Girl, I love how you did your hair. Oh, thanks. I love your hair and your eyes are beautiful. Oh, thanks. My mama gave them to me. Currently, it is 10.21. We need to get in line for the Pike Place Chowder because they open at 11, but even before then, people start queuing up. Checked out the hotel and standing in line for the chowder. As we eagerly wait, let's figure out what to order. 10 more minutes until opening. And the second line is starting to form on the other side. The rule is you can't sit until you get your meal. Fingers crossed that the counter stays open. A row of first place awards lined the wall. Quite an accomplishment. We got the New England clam chowder with bacon in a sourdough bread bowl, and it is overflowing with enthusiasm. Mamio really wanted to try the Manhattan style chowder and came with a slice of thick bread. All right, we're diving in. Does the chowder live up to the hype? I'm curious. It's quite salty, so you definitely have some bread with that. Already though, I can say from my personal preferences, I like Ivar's more. <laughs> that one, you don't need extra bread, you could just have it alone. This one tastes more like the standard clam chowder, and you get that seafood flavor. Do you think there's more clam in this one compared to the other one? So you could actually order a sampler set that comes in either four chowders or eight different chowders, and it's a lot. I saw someone else who ordered it. Let's try the Manhattan. Not as salty as a chowder. Smells and tastes like tomato. I like Manhattan clam chowder and Boston style. In this situation, I do prefer the Manhattan more. This piece of bread, it has absorbed a lot of the chowder, so it's a bit soggy in the inside. When this chowder is paired with the bread, I like it more than the Ivar. But if you have the chowder by itself, then I prefer the Ivar. It's almost 12 noon, which means we've been in downtown Seattle for a solid 24 hours. On our way back home, we pick up some flowers and stop by Gasworks Park. So I was talking to the vendor here and they were saying as it gets closer to December, there's less vendors selling flowers. Yeah, because when we came here two months ago, it was just lined up, like booth after booth, just flowers. It was just like mind blowing. So here we have dried pussy willow. The fuzzy balls are like mini bunnies. 
we bought a tall bunch and put them on the shelf above the fireplace. By the way, I got the pussy willows from Mung Highland Garden. Recently, I got really into weaving and there's a yarn shop here, so let's see what selection they have. All these colors remind me of the fresh produce stalls. Ah, yarn hand dyed locally in Pioneer Square. That means it's near where we had the underground tour. These are the Seahawks colors, the football team. Seattle oh yeah, go Hawks. Seahawks. I do not have this in my collection yet, so I'm gonna get this one. The spinning device transforms the yarn into a ball, so it'll be easier to weave with. Love the irregularities in texture and width. We're waiting for our car. Mamiyo, what's your favorite thing we ate in the past 24 hours? I cannot choose just one. One is Thai beef and mishu, and the other one, uh, flagship grilled cheese sandwich. Just made it to Gasworks Park, which was once the site of a coal gasification plant. The plant was shut down in the 1950s when the city switched to natural gas. Landscape architect Richard Hugg was asked to develop the toxic land into a park. The contaminated soil was reclaimed through bioremediation. While the structures were wiped down with non-chemical based cleaner, one area is fenced off and referred to as the Forbidden Zone. Visitors flock in for picnics, fly kites, and soak in the view of downtown Seattle. And look over there, that's the Space Needle! It's said that Gasworks Park is one of the best places in Seattle to watch the 4th of July fireworks. And there's even a large play barn for kids. If you got this far in the video, I applaud you. It's a long video. The next part is bonus. Think of it as dessert. We visit favorite spots and then some new places. A few days later, one of my best friends visit us and we take her around to Pike Place Market for a food crawl. It's Saturday and you could tell by the lines. First stop, Seattle Coffee Works for the grand opening party. Round two, toasted sandwich at Michu's. For whatever reason, the Thai beef tastes a little different today. Is it because the coffee we had? That's the funny thing about food. What you ate before your meal can affect your experience. Ah, so much more to eat at Michu's, but my bestie must try the Beecher's Mac and Cheese. We meet again, you glorious tub of cheese. My friend fell in love with the mac and cheese while Mamio and I fell in love with it again. Salty, but because it's so cheesy, it's so good. Combining the mac and cheese with the Thai beef sandwich because I'm scholastic like that. On the same street is a shop that has Middle Eastern foods and gifts. There's also a Mexican grocery that sells hot sauce, chips, tortillas, as well as tacos and breakfast burritos. Walking towards Elliott Bay, a pop-up non-stall serves Indian-style flatbread. This is so bumpy, it looks like mountains. And that is a lake. You can't say you've been to Pike Place Market without a stroll through the main arcade. Look at these delicate white leaves. They are dried money plants. An assortment of olive oil on a turntable. Strawberries, blackberries, raspberries, very, very nice. The more I come to Pike Place Market, the more I realize one trip is not enough. There's always something new to discover here. Does this look familiar? That's right, it's the gum wall. How's Mommy O's gum doing? Still here and feeling at home. Black pink in this area. A rainbow. Wow, people really worked on this one. This wall has so many layers. Is there a name for these creatures? Ladies and gents, welcome to the Pike Place Toilets, where you can see people in the other stalls. Now we're gonna check out completely new spots you haven't seen in this video. Chocolate! So many kinds, this is dangerous. I wanna try everything. Chili peanut chocolate. There's something called bioactive chocolate. Bioactive, is it a new marketing term or for reals? Let's get it. And then there's a shop with bat skeletons and tarantulas. Venture in deeper and seek the fortune teller. Rather than view these cards as ultimate truth, think of them as a guide or seeing your current situation in a different way. Sometimes they do state the obvious. My fortune says, now is the time to start that new project you've been contemplating. Wait, but which one? We got sucked into the Polish pottery place, admired some dishware, and eventually found ourselves at what is called to be the world's oldest comic book shop, called Golden Age Collectibles. And then there's the old Seattle Paperworks, home to vintage advertisement prints, newspapers, and magazines. Inching even closer to the waterfront, welcome to Indie Chocolate, a cafe and factory that hosts chocolate making classes. Beware, temptations lurk in every sight, like this pumpkin cake with cardamom and cream cheese frosting. Gold dusted truffles, which means your poop will be extra fancy. 
we learned about the chocolate making process and get fresh samples. By the way, this is the cacao fruit. After the cacao beans are dried and crushed, they become cacao nibs. It is dinner time! On the same floor as Storyville Coffee is Mats at the Market, where you get views of the market and also the sun setting behind the islands. Before anything else, bread, then half a dozen oysters and hamachi ceviche. The evening progresses and the colors are mood. Is this a painting or reality? No filter needed. The seafood stew contains king crab, scallop, mussels, clam, fin fish, tomato broth, Italian sausage, and grilled focaccia. The roasted duck breast with charred Brussels sprouts, chestnuts, pumpkin, and cipollini agrodolce. I wanted to spend quality time with my mom and best friend, so I didn't vlog extensively. Just filmed clips here and there so you get an idea of other food options around here. Remember the bioactive chocolate? Inside, the package is I am naive, and the chocolate has a man on a unicycle. The other chocolate has actual dried chunks of cacao pulp on it. One week later, we head back to downtown for a business meeting, then check out new food spots. It's a rainy day and we adore it. Gray streets covered in light golden leaves, as other leaves quiver. Ah, holiday lights. At the time I filmed this, it was November. For brunch, we load up on Conversation. Conversation serves farm-to-table dishes. Portions are on the small side, but hey, it leaves room to eat more food at other places. Across the street is Top Pot Donuts. Options include Chocolate Sandcastle, Pink Rainbow, Valley Girl Lemon, and Raspberry Glazed Old Fashioned. We walked into a donut shop and came up with something else. The squash bread. Oh yeah, pumpkin seeds and other seeds. Can't get enough of Pike Place Market. While it's touristy, there's a good reason why. Today we finally get to try Pasta Casalinga, a casual Italian restaurant serving handmade pasta influenced by local Northwest flavors. The walls open up to the atrium, creating a spacious feeling for diners. Mmm, stacks of lasagna ready to go. It's made with sweet pea, fennel seed sausage, and mushroom. We ordered the squid ink spaghetti alla chitara with calamari, capers, and cannellini beans. Incidentally, food with squid ink can give you lip tint. Remember that ball of yarn? Its irregularity created a smooth wave on my weaving. It's always fun to try a smorgasbord of textures and colors, whether it has to do with arts, crafts, or food. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and got some ideas on where to eat and what to do in Seattle. So you might be wondering, what's your favorite thing you ate in this video? The spaghetti at Pasta Casalinga, the first Thai beef sandwich we had at Michu, and Beecher's mac and cheese. That's the order I suggest eating because the Beecher's mac and cheese was the saltiest of the three. But it's also cheese heaven. My biggest tip is come early because lines can get crazy long. Think of it like this. It's an amusement park for food lovers. Remember to subscribe and hit that notification bell. For food and travel in Korea, check out my other channel, Sweet and Tasty TV. To relax at night, listen to ASMR Bedtime with Miss Mina. We read, crunch, crinkle, and more. In the sunset cold. Toodles, my noodles. There's even a gum that was blown up into a bubble. So they have a long counter where you can sit and eat. I'm trying to look at the food, but this girl's fabulously glimmering jacket is capturing my attention. Walked in for pastry, walked out wanting a disco ball. There's seating areas. Oh, there's a bird up there. <laughs> this one, the cheese is drippy, <laughs> so you gotta watch out. Uh, don't wear your best clothes when you eat this. It's like a kind of like your own Arby's commercial. Or my fingers got a little bit messy. So what you do is you take a peel of the bread and then use it as a napkin so it absorbs the juice. And then, mm. <laughs> Mamiya really likes the dough, so she's I just peeling it <laughs> with the sausage. <laughs> yeah, you're taking off the sleeping bag. One of the best things to eat in a winter. Next to where we got the fish and chips, they have a, a restaurant style dining and that menu is more extensive and of course since it's a sit-in dining, you'll have to pay tip. So if you're on the go and you want to save more money, you're on budget, then eat the street food style way and dine inside here. The restroom is titled Ladies Temple of Convenience. It's kind of a museum in there. Old school woman's underwear on display and even the toilet has nice flowery details. 
it is past 7 30 p.m and it is chilly so we're gonna go to the hotel we we're thinking about getting a cocktail uh in the downstairs but i'm still tipsy we're gonna have a early day tomorrow oh there's an h mart over there oh my what what <laughs> it's a korean supermarket nobody else is here right now Woohoo! vip there's a lot of things to look at there's paintings there's some is this real feels real another painting and then a record player as well as records not sure if guests are allowed to uh, play the records pillow in half each half for each butt cheek I really wanted to show you guys the performances but we were not allowed to take video or photos so let me try to paint the image for you first the lights dim down and you're like there's something going on and then the music gets louder and you're like yeah this is a cue for something and then the woman appears she was wearing stockings high heels and um not underwear not swimming suit but it's like a performance suit but you know it reveals her this area she wears a top and a bottom so we saw two sets one at 6 30 and one around like 7 10. so every 30 ish minutes she comes out for the first set she came out with two fans and was flirting with the audience like this going between the tables and smiling always smiling and she'll go like this and then put it back and when she put it back it looks like a peacock like this There's a hula hoop on a string hanging from the ceiling and she was doing all these poses in the hula hoop. She had so many muscles. Her arms weren't as defined and huge like a bodybuilder's muscles. They were like almost lean muscles, but you could tell she's, she's got something you don't want to mess with. Holding up all those poses takes a lot of strength. And then for the second set, she had a long veil that was hanging in the back of her hair. That veil, I think it was touching the floor. It was really long. She would wrap it around her arm this and then unwrap it and then fling it there are some moments i was like oh, is she gonna fling that veil into a customer's face it got so close sometimes or well, at least from my angle it looked really close so she would go like this something like that the second set was not done on a hula hoop it was like um what do you call those string things it hangs like a loop and when i did aerial yoga classes this is a similar setup we used above the sink with two crosses there are coasters at first i was cracking up because i thought it's a crusty service but this other one says trusty service but it looks like i'm um, here it got bent so the t the c is actually a t steam is there a secret underground dumpling shop down there? Nice and furry. It's like a pet. If a cat was a plant, that would be it. Another plus to coming this early and to film is I don't need to put as many almonds on people's faces. So that's gonna save me hours of time. It's a monkfish. <laughs> Someone was pulling its tail and moving it. It's a sweet bakery and it says make America sweet again. <laughs> Do you hear their eating sounds? 